Welcome to lesson 12. Um, this lesson was uh, sponsored by or commissioned by Gregor who wants to have a sort of simple introduction to playing uh, music in tab. Um, for that purpose I'm going to use this piece by Tobias Hume. It's called I Am Falling uh, and it's it's very straightforward um, and but it, but it serves as a great introduction to learning how to read tablature. Um, tablature looks very alien, especially to people who don't play lute music, and I include myself in that. Um, but actually, in, in a certain way, it's, it's much more straightforward than using regular uh, notation, because it's, it's kind of like playing by numbers, or actually playing by letters. Um, so we'll, we'll go into that in a minute. Um, the first thing to recognise um, is that what you're looking at when you look at tab is not a stave in the regular notational sense. Um, it's actually more like a diagram of the fingerboard. So to clarify that, um, a, a regular modern stave in modern notation um, has lines and spaces that each represent uh, a given note in, in a range, and that range is determined by the clef at the beginning of the, of the line. In tablature, uh, what we're seeing is uh, not a representation of notes, but a representation of the actual strings of the vial. Um, there are uh, five spaces within the, the set of lines that we're given, um, and uh, you can imagine the, the diagram or the diagram beginning at the bottom, beginning with the, the bottom line uh, and then working its way up. And so each space on the way up is a different string. So the bottom space, so the space above the bottom line, is the D string, or the bottom string of your instrument, uh, and the top space, so the space above the top line, is your top string. And note that in this system there are only uh, six strings represented. Um, you don't get um, tablature, at least in lira bar music, um, representing um, the uh, a seventh bass string. Um, that comes later in French tablature. Uh, for this session, we're going to just look at uh, English Lyraval repertoire. Um, so we have six strings represented. In each of those spaces, you'll see a range of letters, and those very simply correspond to the different frets. Um, the letter A uh, tells you that you need to play an open string, and then B is your top fret, uh, C is the next fret, D, the fret after that, and so on, uh, in ascending order um, by semitone. Um, so, Liraval music uh, tablature does actually tell you exactly which frets you need to play on which string. Um, this is why I call it kind of playing by letters, um, because it, it, it represents a system of instructions um, that are actually easier to follow in a certain sense than, um, than ordinary notation. Rhythmically, uh, we have, at the beginning, there is a time signature, what Playford called the mood, uh, usually either um, a common time, represented by a C with a line through it, or triple time, uh, obviously represented by a, a three, usually being three minims to a bar. Um, but you have to be slightly careful because the, the barring of this music is often not very accurate. Certainly in Hume, you'll get um, bars that seem to be very very long some some will be in common time some will be you know the regular two or four minims and then suddenly you'll get a bar of six or even eight um, so you have to be a little bit careful about that but it in a way it doesn't matter because um, as well as uh, telling you which frets you should play the music also tells you which rhythms you should play um, now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated than than the notation we might be used to because the, the rhythms are written out above the, the stave, the diagram um, of the fingerboard. So you have to kind of look and line up the, the rhythmic values, the, the crotchets um, or quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes, crotchets, quavers, minims. You have to line them up with the, uh, with the letter that uh, uh, usually falls directly underneath, although not always. Um, and that will tell you which uh, notes uh, which, which rhythmic values are supposed to play um, on which frets. So if we look at the beginning of I Am Falling, you can see uh, that we're in common time. There's the C right at the beginning with a line through it, immediately after the illuminated I. 
Um, and then at the very top of the diagram, we have uh, a quarter note, a crotchet. Uh, and, and then you'll see that we've got four letters in that opening bar. Now, in tablature, it doesn't tell you, um, it, not every letter has a rhythmic value associated with it above the stave. So if you're, um, in this example, you, um, you can see that the, there's only one crotchet, and that implies that all of the letters that follow that crotchet, that quarter note, are also crotchets or quarter notes. Um, and that only changes with a bar line or with a change in rhythmic value. So here we have four uh, quarter notes, four crotchets, and then we have a bar line, and he reiterates, Hume reiterates the quarter note, the crotchet, for the first two letters of the next bar. Uh, and then we have a bunch of three letters, uh, which, uh, as you might imagine, because they're stacked one on top of each other, uh, that represents a chord. Uh, and at that point, we also get a change in uh, rhythmic value to a minim or half note. Uh, and this is where it gets a bit tricky, because um, the next double stopped pair of letters, the B and the C, are um, sort of not, it's not entirely clear whether they are minims or quarter notes. Uh, in, in fact, that is another uh, quarter note, and that becomes uh, obvious if you look at the, uh, the total number of minims in the bar. So we have um, uh, two uh, crotchets, quarter notes, at the beginning of that bar, then a minim, a half note, then if that was a second minim, then we'd have um, one, we'd have an odd number of, uh, of quarter notes or crotchets in that bar. It'll become clearer when I play it. So um, let, let's just take those first two bars. Um, now, the very first note we play, we know it's a quarter note, and the letter C tells us that it must be on the second fret, because A is the open string, B is the first fret, C is the second fret. And the space is right in the middle. Uh, we know that the, the bottom space is the D string. The next space above that must be the G. And the space above that is the C string. So we know that that note, at least on a bass file, is D. Now, since we're starting um, on, a, on a, the opening bar has an even number of notes, we know that we should play that first note with a push bow. Uh, and we know that also, because that those first two notes are Ds, the next note we have is a, a B, uh, which is to say the, the, the B on the, on the, in the tab diagram, and that means that it must be the, uh, the first fret. Again, it's in the same space, so it's still on the same string. So we've gone from uh, playing a D to playing a C sharp. Now, uh, moving on, the fourth note in that opening bar uh, is again a C, so we know it's the same fret that we played for the first note, but it's in the space below the initial space, and that means that it must be on the string below, so we're playing an A on the G string. So the opening bar goes... Simple enough. Now the next bar, um, we again have a change of string because we, we now shift up two spaces um, and that space uh, must be obviously the string above the C string so we've, got, we've, we've just finished playing the G string so then we hop across two strings to play the B first fret on the E string so we're playing an F natural uh, and then we're back to the D that we commenced with <laughs> Now we have our first change in rhythmic value to minim, uh, and we have our first chord. Now we've actually played all three of those notes indicated already. Um, we know that that C at the bottom of the stack of letters um, is the second fret on the G string, or in, in the case of a bass viol, an A. Then we have uh, a B, which is the, the first fret. Uh, the, on, in the space above, so that's first fret on the C string, so C sharp, and then an A. Now that A is an open string, so we've, and it's in the, in the space above again, so we know that that must be an E. Then we have to shift to another double, another chord, a double stop. Um, again, C being second fret, B being first fret. 
another chord. So that's repeated. Then the, two, the chord changes and we have another A. So where the C was is now an A or an open string. So you let go of your second finger on the, uh, on the second fret on the C string to get the C. And above that we have a D, which is the third fret. Again, on the same string that you've just been stopping the, uh, the first fret. So you go from first finger to third finger. And then we have that same fret where the D indicates the third fret on the next string up, on the A string. So you can just tuck your fourth finger in so that you don't have to let go of lots of fingers. So we get that nice resonance. If you don't do that, then you have to swap. You have to leap across with your third finger which causes an interruption in the sound. If you keep the third finger down and use your fourth finger, then you maintain the resonance. We discussed this in the previous video on chordal playing. Uh, then we have a new bar uh, and a new rhythmic value. It goes back to a minim or half note. Uh, and again, we have a B representing the first fret and an A representing the open string. So we know that the, uh, that top space uh, within the, the lines is your A string. So we know that we have to play an A string and then a, a B uh, at the same time. So in this case, first fret on the E string, uh, which becomes an F natural. So that's our minim. Then we revert back to crotchets uh, for two more double stops. Again, third, uh, third fret on the third string with a, an open C string beneath that. Uh, and then another stack of chords. Um, again, here we have a C, so a second fret, and we've, we change string, we go down one string, so we're now in the second bottom space, which means we're on our second bottom string, the G, uh, followed by a, a B on the string above that, and an A, another open string. So we end up with A, C sharp, D. Now, he changes rhythm again, a slightly unusual ending to the, to the phrase. We have another C, we're, we're playing quarter notes, crotchets now. Um, so again, second fret, we're in the third space, so we're on the third string from the bottom. And then for the first time we get the open D string, the very final note in this opening section is an A in the bottom space, meaning in on the bottom string. So, this is how that opening starts. Very straightforward. Now, we then have a, a, a dotted bar line which can represent a, a repeat and sometimes it is sometimes it isn't um, I, I, this being a sort of quite dance like piece I would suggest that and also because it's short it's a good place to repeat um, the second section is more of the same uh, we have a, a lot of bar a lot of uh, crotchets the, the the character changes it becomes much faster moving so you can see that that next section I won't call it a bar um, is full of crotchets and interestingly he reiterates the crotchet towards the end of that bar slash section which suggests that um, maybe the printer omitted a bar line um, so again we have a b representing the first fret and an a representing the open string so at this point it becomes um, a little bit more important that you can recognize which space is which string because we're going to be jumping between them uh, quite quite quickly so we start with the top space and the, um, uh, and the space below that. So that's our A string and our E string. And there's the chord. So repeated patterns are a good way of learning tablature because they start to familiarize you with the um, uh, with a layout of the spaces and the and the uh, 
the uh, fret letters. <laughs> Now here we have a big leap. Uh, he wants you to play um, the first fret on the E string and the open A. And then we've got to go all the way down to the bottom space, the bottom string, with a D, which represents the third fret. Uh, so we have an F on the bass. So we've got a big octave leap. And then A on the third space, uh, in other words, the C string. D above it, third fret. E string, back to the D, and then we cadence on the uh, G string using the second fret, the A. Now for the first time we have quavers, or uh, eighth notes, and um, this results in a sort of upward flurry of notes, mostly scalic. Uh, so again, this is a good way of familiarising yourself with the, the layout of tab, uh, because all we're going to do, we're starting on the, uh, the uh, third space from the bottom, or in other words, our C string, uh, and the letter C um, tells us we need the second fret. Uh, then on the string above that, we have an open string. B is the first fret, back to the C. Uh, the letter C, uh, second fret on the C string, A, B, D, A. So A open string, B first fret, D third fret, little scale there. And then in the final bar, uh, we revert to crotchets. note there is uh, a minim and then a, a big chord also notionally on a minim but with a pause above it so you can take your time so you've, we've got the uh, that C the penultimate uh, item in the piece is the uh, second fret on the C string the, in other words it's it's the note is D on the bass and then we have a big stacked chord uh, we can see that it's um, uh, starts on the bottom string the D uh, and then we've got C, 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 A, A. So that means we need the, f the second fret on the G string, the C string, and the E string, and then we can let the top two strings ring clear. So on a bass file, that's D major. And for the first time in this piece, we have uh, something written for the very top string, and you'll notice that the A, the top string is represented by the space above the tab diagram. So the A sits on top of the top line and that tells you that um, you want to play on your top string. So that is a, a brief introduction to Lyraval tablature and how to read it. Um, the great thing about tab is that it's not tuning specific, which is to say that for any given um, tuning system uh, you can read tab. So I could read this piece as easily on a treble, a bass, or a tenor. It doesn't really matter which the tuning is because it doesn't tell you which specific pitches to play, only which frets to play. So you can you can um, uh, learn this music uh, whether or not you play bass file. There are also a range of tunings that you can uh, look into. Lyraval Music had a whole array of uh, tuning systems uh, uh, where you detune um, or, or rather retune different strings to create different resonances uh, and to enable you to play different kinds of chords. Um, but we'll look at that in a future video. For now I hope you enjoy this this simple but quite lovely piece uh, and I hope it inspires you to um, to look in more depth at the vast array of um, wonderful lyra of our music by Hume and by others. Uh, it's a really fantastic uh, repertoire for our instrument and uh, you should take good advantage of it. It's well worth learning. Okay, uh, I hope you found that useful. Um, as always, um, I have a, a, a large array of archive of um, Music Minus One recordings on my Patreon site. Uh, you can subscribe for a monthly fee at patreon.com forward slash Sam Stadlin and that'll also entitle you to commission new tutorial videos and also um, new Music Minus One recordings. 
there's music there from uh, Renaissance through to Baroque and even some modern contemporary music. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing and um, I'll see you in the next video.